I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to be talking about rim shots, the wonderful world of rim shots. So I have two of my favorite rim shot drums here, and I'll be showing you some close-ups, hopefully that's on right now, uh, of the drums so you can see how I'm doing the rim shots. This is a Canopus Zelkova, 5-inch by 14, and this is a Horst Link, so a sonar, very old. Um, I believe the, the model of this was HLD 593, and this is a cast bronze drum. Uh, it's about four inches, uh, or is four inches um, high, and they're both 14 inches in diameter. Okay, so they're both great rim shot drums when I'm doing something on drum set, like, you know, a funk tune or a rock tune that needs a lot of rim shots. I reach for these, one of these two drums, normally. I have some deeper drums. I have a deeper version of the Canopus Zelkova and the deeper version of the Sonar, but that drum is so loud, it's pretty much useless. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievably loud. So it's a version of this that's about seven inches high, okay? Anyway, these drums are great because, well, first of all, they're built like tanks. I don't know if you know anything about the Canopus Zelkova, but it's made from one piece of wood, kind of like a taiko drum and it's round on the outside. So uh, the bearing edge is, is just razor sharp on it. Now this drum, since it's cast bronze, it's extremely heavy and it rings for days. So uh, that's a, a great desirable thing. You can always dampen down a ring, but you can't create more ring on a drum. So I'll be using these drums exclusively today to demonstrate some of these rim shots. So you saw my little crazy timbali demo there. I had the snares off and I was playing all kinds of rim shots. The one I didn't play uh, too much was the cross rim. That is considered a rim shot. Then there's uh, the, the regular rim shot, which is this. Okay, and that's how it, uh, it sounds on that drum, on this drum. All right, and then there's the stick shot. Now a stick shot is a stick on another stick, touching the drum. And you can do that anywhere on the drum. And it changes the sound, so. I'm sure you can hear the difference there in the sound. You can also do a stick shot um, with the stick on the rim instead of up like that, so. In the orchestra world, that's how we do them. They're, um, they're more likely to sound similar. So uh, if you're playing Aaron Copeland music, a lot of that uses rim shots. We'll do it like this. Okay, on this drum, it sounds like. So those are the three basic kinds of rim shots. Again, the rim shot, the regular rim shot. Okay, we have the cross rim click. You hear that a lot in country music or R&B, uh, reggae, just like this. And the stick shot. That's the up stick shot and the down stick shot. So I'm going to be talking today about playing rim shots in the, with the traditional grip and the match grip, all right, and when to use them and uh, how to position your hands when you're doing them. So the first one, the regular rim shot, is done by hitting the drum and the rim at the exact same time, which is actually harder than you think. So if you hit, if you're a little too high here and you hit uh, up on the rim, you'll just get a rim. I, you saw in the demo there, I was playing regular on the rim as well as rim shots to show you the difference, okay? So you, that's just the rim, then that's the drum, Okay, and when we play both, it sounds like this. So you're really trapping that stick between the two. Now you can change the sound of the rim shot by where you're positioning the stick along the rim. So if I put it all the way forward, it sounds like this. Much fatter. If I put it all the way back, it sounds like this. I call that a harmonic rim shot when you're on the edge of the drum like this. 
And those are, uh, stand the most chance of being inaccurate, the ones where you're uh, all the way back. And that's okay sometimes because that's, that adds flavor to your sound. So. As opposed to more up. So you see when I'm up more, the rim shot is lower in pitch. Uh, so it's good to know that. So you can do uh, really anywhere. Now, if you're playing uh, uh, a track, if you're recording, the goal is to get that rim shot sounding um, consistent. So what I normally do when I record, and these drums would be muffled just a bit if I was recording. They're, they're kind of ringy. I put the drum on snare. Let me muffle this because, oh, by the way, they're both tuned to a B natural, so you could see this difference between them. And this, this drum has a skin tone head because I found that that sounds the best on these Zelkovas. And this just has a regular Remo Ambassador. So those are the heads I'm using. So I'll just muffle this for a second. You hear the... The Zelkova has a... a for, for a small drum, it has a big sound. Um, hopefully that's coming across on the recording. It actually sounds lower than you'd think it, it, it would. So I tuned it up kind of high today. But um, it's a wet sounding drum, which means you get a lot of snare response, which I like for recording. It makes it sound fatter, you know? So the rim shot with the snare on with the muffling sounds like this. Now you see there, I didn't really miss any. Uh, when I was starting out as a young drummer and I was playing in rock bands and stuff, I always used to try to you know, get that sound and it was really difficult. So what I did to practice uh, Rimshot's traditional grip, because of course that's how I played uh, mostly back then, uh, I would just angle the drum with the angle of my wrist. Okay, that's very important. So in other words, if the drum isn't angled with your wrist in traditional and you're trying to do rim shots you're gonna to have to do unnatural motions with your hands okay but here that's the snare. I should wait till I muffle it to talk but that's just a snare that's the rim shot you hear how it's much higher so what I do is I just get that angle and then I would just practice over and over And I would do like a hundred of those without missing. That's, I know that sounds pathetic, but that's really what I did. I did the same thing when I was developing my Kunga slaps. I would do a hundred slaps at a time without missing. That's when I knew I had it and I wouldn't miss. Because on a recording, uh, back then we used reel-to-reel -reel, uh, tape, you know, two inch to record on. So you, it, editing was much more difficult, let's just say that. Uh, now you could just take one rim shot and replace it, so it's easier. But still, if you want to be a recording drummer, you'll make the engineer very happy if you go in there and do it right the first time, okay? So that's, the, that's my strategy for traditional rim shots, is to angle the drum the way my stick is angled. Now you'll see on the close-up how when I play it, I'm not using my whole wrist like this. I'm not doing that, because if I do that, it's going to be much... You saw there that some of those rim shots did not come out because I was using my wrist. But if you let the stick just go, you won't miss as much. You might miss sometimes. But you, so you, what I'm doing there is I'm using my thumb to propel the stick. Now, doing rim shots match grip is much easier. Okay, so... Pretty much everybody knows how to do this, but we'll go over it one more time. So you're basically trapping that stick in between the rim and the head, and you're... Okay, and again, I would practice as many times as possible to get that consistent sound is what you want. Now, let's talk about color. So we're going to turn the snares off again and take this off. 
rim shots are so cool because of the color they create on the drum. If you're playing timbales or if you play timbales, you know this. You listen to like Tito Puente or any of, of these great timbale players play a solo, you hear all these different colors of rim shots, and that's the personality. That's what you want. If they all sounded the same, you'd sound like a drum machine. So you don't want that. So to get different colors, you move the stick back and forth very subtly. So... see there I'm doing some maybe just an inch closer to the rim others farther away and that varies the pitch just a little to make it sound very interesting okay let's play that on the sonar drum now on this sonar drum the rim shots are a little more difficult because these bronze rims are shaped different. In other words, they're kind of bent over and wider. So that does make it more difficult. Also, I would avoid the sharp rims, the cast rims that are sharp on top. In other words, they don't have a fold over them. They will tear up your sticks faster than anything. I'm not using anything special today for a stick. It's just, this is the stick that Vic Firth makes me. Um, I have lots of them, so I can tear these up but you don't want to be using concert sticks to do this kind of rim shot because you'll ruin them like within a second okay so please don't do that but so you want to um, use rims that are bent over a little bit not the straight rims like on a radio king or some of these other drums because they'll really mess up your sticks and actually you'll mess up the rim too over time you'll bend that flange back or you'll I should say you'll create a flange when you keep playing it'll go back or forward or whatever and the rim will be distorted eventually so use um use bent over rims now i like die cast rims uh like the kind gretsch makes or made i'm not sure they're making them anymore you can get those uh several companies make them they're about twice as heavy maybe more than the regular um rolled rims i would definitely suggest those they're very heavy they make the drum easier to tune and the rim shots sound much better so let's move on now to the cross rim click. So that's this. Now there's a lot of misinformation how to play this. Here's the right way. So you leave the palm of your hand on the head, okay? About, let's say, right here. I'll do a close up of it where my strainer is, okay? So I'm on, I hope you can see it. I'm on the bottom half of the drum. And then you just move your wrist. Okay, it's all wrist. All wrist doing this. Now you can also you can also do this. It's a trick I used to play Brazilian music where I'm lifting my wrist off and using the other part of the stick. Okay, so you see, I'm almost getting like a roll out of that because this part of the stick is actually hitting before the rim. So that's called, I call that a rim roll when you're doing that. And to do that, you hold the stick loosely here and you're just doing that. See how that's moving? It's pretty easy. I use a lot of these things in my solo book, Broad Strokes. I'll actually put some links um, in the description of this video so you could link to some of the solos that I do with tons of rim shots. Uh, that'll be uh, educational, and you'll see all these, all these um, different techniques that I use. Okay, so that's the rim roll. But basically, when you do the regular R&B or pop cross rim click, you're doing this. Now, you can fish around for the best sound. See how much deeper that is? That's because I moved forward on the stick. So that's a little more than a third of the way up the stick, okay? And I'm getting a much bigger sound. With the snares on,
And you'll see how I'm just moving my wrist. Okay, I'm not taking the hand off the drum. That serves to muffle the drum and make that drier, okay? So that's what I would suggest you do. So. And again, you need to experiment. Now the butt of the stick should be out, okay? The back of the stick. If you do it this way, it's much thinner. Now you might want to do that sometimes. That's okay. But the sound is much thinner. See? As opposed to this. All right? Now there's also a way to play grooves like boleros and rumbas. Uh, if you listen to old Philly Joe Jones recordings, he, he was fond of doing a... There's a great recording of a tune called Stablemates, uh, where he starts, you know... He does all those kinds of tricky things. It's beautiful stuff. He was very fond of the crossroom click and doing all kinds of things like that. So uh, that's something to explore. Now, the last one uh, is the stick shot. A very, very useful, especially in jazz. In the old days, they called this rapping, when you would go. Uh, several snare drum books use this. If you look at the Wilcoxon book, he used to constantly, where you'd play stick on stick. Now you can also change the pitch of the drum by applying pressure to that and pressing in and playing. Uh, and you can always change the pitch of the drum just by doing this. All right, so that's something that you can uh, do kind of, you know, as an interesting thing as in a solo or whatever. But the stick shot like this, is that, all right? Now the flat stick shot is great to use if you just have uh, separate hits. So more for orchestral playing where you just have to, you know, simulate a gunshot or something like that. All right, good. Now the last thing I wanna show you is uh, sort of a hand drum technique using uh, just your hand and the rim. So this is something I use sometimes if I'm doing a gig and I want to change up, you know, something during a solo, we're doing a lap tune, so. So that's something to think about. I use it for Brazilian music sometimes, all kinds of things. And you can really get some, some nice effects from that. So that does it for rim shots. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next one I'll try to do, I know I promised this a while back, but uh, we'll try to get a bunch of snare drums in here. And I'll do uh, a demo of different drums with different heads so you can hear the difference between those. This will be a drum set uh, snare drum video. Thanks so much and have a great day.